Yes. Get ready to take control of your own financial destiny. destiny. It's time to build your dream business. Welcome to the Empowered Entrepreneur. This just got exciting. With your host, Spider Graham. Your education starts now. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the broadcast. This is Spider Graham, and this time I want to talk about something I think that's incredibly important, not only in business, but also in life, and that is how do we reduce the amount of negativity that we bring into our lives? Now, yeah, I know that sounds a little crunchy in places, but what I'm really getting at is that there's so much possibility when we work for ourselves for great things to happen, but there are also going to be setbacks. There are also going to be days when things just don't go very well, and by the way, you know, I'm a human being, but <laughs> first and foremost, and as an entrepreneur, I've had more than one day where you wake up and you look in the mirror and you say to yourself, who are you kidding? You're not going to make this happen. How, who's going to take you seriously? You know, just, and you just load, just talk about, you know, bad affirmations. You just start to load on yourself all this negativity and all these reasons why you can't be successful. And so you kind of sometimes have to snap out of it and say, okay, I'm in a tailspin. I think I should pull up on the uh, on the yoke here a little bit and get back uh, level flying. So one of the things that really works for me is to make sure that in my day-to-day life, I'm not carrying around a lot of extra head garbage. Okay, you just don't you don't need a lot of extra head trash. Now this became something I noticed probably 25 years ago, and I would get up every morning. And I would climb into the shower, and I had this nifty shower radio, and I had it tuned to the local news station. And, you know, you start this day off with wonderful possibility, and 10 minutes later, I'd climb out of the shower totally defeated. Humanity is horrible. People are hurting each other. There's all this horrible stuff going on. And you get this really horrible, skewed sense of the universe based upon the content that's being provided to us in the form of, and this is air quotes, boys and girls, news. And you know what? You don't need it. And the idea of of there's a difference between information I can do something with and stuff that is just there to grab my attention and in a lot of cases just make me feel badly, you don't need that. Okay? Guess what? Whether you listen to the news or not, people are going to do dumb, mean, horrible things to one another. People are going to kill one another. People are going to die in tragic ways. And you're listening to it's not going to make it better or, or worse. Okay? It's going to happen. But the problem that I ran into personally is like, okay, now, what do I do with this information other than feel empathetic, other than feel badly about it? And you start to internalize and you start to, once again, the subconscious view of the world is, wow, this is really a hellhole. This is a tough place to be. Well, guess what? That's not the case. If you look around the world, the vast majority of what takes place every single day on this planet is positive. It's good. People are being nice to one another. People are being cherishing and loving and having children and doing really cool things to help old ladies across the street, etc. There's all this wonderful stuff going on. And one of the things I absolutely love about the modern age is that I'm not tied down to a one-size-fits-all news broadcast anymore. I don't watch TV news. Heck, I don't even think I watch TV anymore, come to think of it. I don't listen to radio news. I don't read a newspaper. And it's not that because I don't want to be informed. I don't want a constant parade of stuff I can't do anything with as my information stream. So what do I do? Well, you know what? I create my own newspapers online. I go in and I define what I think I want to know more about. I cover business and marketing topics, which is not only something I'm fascinated with, but it's also my bread and butter. I love to read about what's going on in science and technology because it's like being able to live in the future every single day. Wow. Look at what people are figuring out how to do. This is really cool, and it's really positive. So we can do this for ourselves, by the way. It doesn't doesn't take a lot to really just kind of change your perception and get away from the idea of what mainstream media wants you to think about, and what you need to think about are often two very different things. So how do we approach this? Well, first of all, I'm a big fan of you decide what you want to bring into your head. I'm not saying you can't be, you know, that you need to live blissfully unaware of bad things that are going on in the world. But there's a difference between being aware that some some sort of battle going on in the Middle East and sitting glued to your TV set going, oh, my God, you know, you don't you don't need to live that life. Okay, you end up worrying, you end up making things that really aren't your world become a big part of your world. So how do we do this? 
Well, in my experience, first of all, you can choose how information gets into your head. You can choose to turn off the TV news, stop reading the newspapers. You can choose to create, as I've done, online streams of information that will provide you with more of an understanding of what's going on in the world, but also it'll allow you to home right in on the things that are most important to you, things that will help you make decisions. You know, we, we hear about this phrase, I believe it was the New York Times, all the news you can use. Well, give me news I can use. If all the news is just negative and downer, I can't really use it. So I can create my own news I can use by going on and cultivating a path of areas of interest and possibility. All right. Once again, nice place to be. The other thing you can do is to make sure that when you are talking to other people, you stay positive. Now, it's not necessarily the kindest thing I'm ever going to say, but when you sit down with any group of people, you know, in a lunchroom at, a, at an office, what is it filled with? You have gossip, you have kind of slanderous comments, you have negativity, you have complaining. People complain all the time. People love to complain. You know, how are you doing? Well, let me tell you how I'm doing. You know, my life sucks and this is why. You know, it's people are going for sympathy or whatever, but once again, you get this constant stream of why things are bad, why things are bad, why things are bad. Now, let me sidetrack here and explain to you why do we think this? Why are we, why are we attracted to things that are negative? How, how can this help us? Well, it actually helps us an awful lot in certain contexts. And if you go back several thousand years and you find yourself in a village and there's a big calamity at the other end, there's some sort of drama going on and you say, well, you know, I'm blissfully unaware of the fact that there's someone screaming in pain. You know, chances are the saber-toothed tiger that's eating your friend Oog is going to come for you later. So you want to make sure that you are aware if there's something horrible going on in your community. So it's a self-preservation mechanism. But we live in the modern age where we don't have to spend a lot of our time self-preserving. Yes, we have to be careful about how we go about the world, but most of the time we don't have to be constantly tuning into danger. And so as a result, now we have all this danger being reported to us that has nothing to do with us. And so we really don't need to pay attention to it. So understand that where we came by this need for negativity is very natural. But what starts to happen now is when you talk to people, how are you, what's going on in your life, they feel that it's a great opportunity for them to tell you about all the horrible things that are happening. And so many of us are tuned into the drama that we just listen captivated. Oh, and then what happened? Oh, my goodness. How how do you deal with that? Oh, that's the most horrible thing I've ever heard. And there's almost kind of this glee that we get out of just dealing with other people's torment and pain. Okay? It's a little twisted. Instead, what we need to be able to do is cultivate friendships that we can run based upon positivity. I love business relationships a lot of the time because it does allow you to go this, how, how are things in your business? How are things going? What problems are you solving? What are you learning? And by the way, you can approach your friends the same way. So what are you learning? What's going on? When I talk to my kids about school, I, and, and if there are any parents listening, you know exactly what I'm dealing with. You say, hey, uh, how was your day? Fine. Now, what'd you learn? I don't know. And there's just really about a lot of give and take there. And so it just, it always seems kind of whatever. And being able to sit down and have a conversation. So sometimes you have to ask the right questions. When you ask a question like, how was your day? A little too general. And that get, leads to an answer which is really noncommittal. Instead, you say, hey, that, that math test that you were uh, studying for, how'd that go? Do you feel pretty good about your possibilities uh, on, the, on the test? Do you think you did a good job? And you get them at least to start talking about things. And you start focusing on the positivity of what's going on, you know? So, you know, hey, I know I know that you uh, got picked for the play. How are rehearsals going? This is fantastic. You know, whatever. Just find the good thing. And you can do this with your friends as well. You can lead the discussion in a lot of ways by saying, hey, uh, you know, you got that new car. How's that working out for you? Or, you know, how's the promotion? Or find the positive things in their life instead of just saying, hey, how are things? Tell me about all the horrible crap that's happening in your life. And so now you can control it a little bit better and help them and help yourself. And a lot of the time, and this is a lot harder to do, is if you have friendships with people who are just constantly negative, you know, you kind of need to walk away from them. And it's a hard, hard thing to say. And I've had a few friends in my life who just every time you are talking with them about anything, they are just constant, constant downers. And unless you're just sitting there playing their drama games with them and saying, oh, that's horrible. And let me tell you about something horrible that happened to me. And you go back and forth. You notice it. If you walk into a relationship really positive about things all the time and saying, hey, the world is a place filled with amazing potential and I'm doing what I can to find it. You start finding there are a lot of people who just whine all the time. 
And so being able to identify who you want to hang out with and who you shouldn't hang out with is kind of an important part of this. Now, here's another thing to think about just from a, a role model standpoint is that if you want to be successful or you want to be rich or you want to have a certain kind of lifestyle, then one of the best ways to get there is to find people who have that lifestyle, who are rich, who are doing the things that you want to do and hang out with them. Do what they do. If there are a bunch of people sitting around who all have millions and millions of dollars in the bank and you know, you're making a minimum wage, then chances are it will work out a lot better for you if you were to hang out with the people who are really successful and hear what they're talking about and learn about how they got to there than to sit around with a bunch of other people who are making minimum wage and talk about how much, you know, how hard your lives are and how hard it is to make a living, etc. Um, once again, I'm not saying you put blinders on. I'm not saying you stop being empathetic. I'm saying you choose to tune into the things that you could do something with and not just feel badly about. Look, philosophically, life is way too short to be spent in pursuit of misery. And if you focus on the negative and you talk about the negative and all you have going on in your life is drama or someone who did something wrong to you or whatever, then that's the path you're heading down. You don't need to go there. You can be a happy person. By the way, trust me on this. My life has not been a bed of roses. There are certainly times in my life I look back saying, wow, how did I escape from that with my brain intact? But you have to get to that point in your life where you feel more comfortable with who you are. You have to reprogram yourself in so many ways. We've talked about this. Go, go to the podcast on affirmations to get a little bit of insight there. And also just being able to trust yourself. Take the garbage out of your mind. You don't want to go down that path if you don't need to. Anyway, that's all I have on today's topic. Thank you so much, as always, for joining me. And, hey, come by Spidergram.com. Look around. There's some freebies for you. There's some good stuff that you can check out, some videos, things you can learn. And we'd love you to become a subscriber. Join us in our marketing group. It's a marketing community of digital marketers and entrepreneurs and people who are helping one another. We're all working on this together to get us all to a successful and productive future. And we would so much love to have you join us. That's all I have. This is Spider Graham. Thanks as always, and I will talk to you really soon. For more free resources and advice for entrepreneurs, visit spidergram.com and become a subscriber today.